pessimist is an optimist in full possession of the facts, said Schopenhauer. Optimism is usually one of the worst ways to live your life because you will become prone to reject the most inevitable outcomes in life, which are disappointment, pain and suffering. Positive expectation will always be deficient and pernicious for you because bad things will happen more often, so it would be wiser to expect the negative. Many people see pessimism as a defeatist attitude. It is more of a realist-based attitude. When happiness is not placed within the realm of expectation, you won't be as easily disappointed when something doesn't go your way. You would rather accept it as fact and that your newfound expectation is actually quite reliable, and the reason why it is reliable is because you, unlike the optimist, has identified that happiness and good fortune is much more precious, golden, rare than once believed. The optimist expects things to go their way as if it is they that only matter, that the world should only continue around their desires. So it would seem that the optimist really is actually very naive. And in being so, maybe because they were extremely spoiled in the past, that they in a sense were conditioned to expect the best because all they got was the best, the best food, the best toys, but not the best attention. Because if they were given the best attention, reality would make itself known and thus they wouldn't live under an illusion of continuous positive expectation. If you put one in a castle and you dress one up in the finest clothes, give the finest food, the best of all decor, and give one all the money in the world since birth, he will become burdened with positive expectation to the point where everything would be given to him except meaning, as meaning is only ever founded through introspection, and introspection is only ever needed when trying to survive. Yet the man in the high castle doesn't feel the need to survive, because his expectations have never contradicted against his own life. In that case, he is both dead and alive. He is dead because he has never experienced reality, and he is only alive to the point of breath. He is not alive because he loves, because he has never experienced anything. If he experienced reality, then he wouldn't be an optimist, but is an optimist because he hasn't. By living in that castle, he has for eternity been condemned to live as an infantile. Thus progression, tragedy and triumph have all been taken away. The only thing that was needed and not given to him in that castle was life itself. Even to the point of expectation, he stopped expecting positivity because happiness faded into a non-existence. Happiness was never expected with expectations. His optimism lost the expectation of success because there was no need to be optimistic because it was only just his average, predictable existence that he would come to know well. His optimism became meaningless because he had never really suffered. Even the dichotomy of such reality was never truly experienced. Misery for him was still glory for another, and thus he was even too weak to be able to shake a fellow human's hand without the use of a glove. It seems to be that if you unconditionally shower someone in wealth and undivided material success, they will find it difficult to open their eyes under its pressure. But you can even reverse the motion if you want. If you shower a pessimist with material wealth, they may also start to eventually delude themselves into an optimistic retreat, that their ego may expect too much attention and fantasize in it, expect goods and services as it has become their daily norm that nothing can go wrong but right until it does. This is something you could call an optimism overdose. Being spoiled with all that could be puts one in a coma of optimism, expecting the best for themselves all the time, which blinds a person's judgement of the real world. Take for example the unhealthy condition being a child celebrity or a young celebrity. The celebrity will always be an optimist, in their early days of success, as the ego expects nothing else but continued fortune. But after the spotlight dims in the following years, they will then realise reality. This is why so many celebrities take up drugs, not only because, for many other reasons, but fundamentally, it is because a lifetime's worth of attention is given to them in a handful of years. 
then it's suddenly taken away, and that's when they are probably more likely to become pessimists in the worst sense, coupled with existential nihilism. In my view, you have two types of optimists. One is the negative optimist, and the other is the spoiled optimist. The negative optimist actively negates the reality that shit happens on a common basis. They know this deep down, but reject it for many reasons, such as its emotional potency. Because of this, I would guess that optimists end up being more suicidal and depressive than pessimists due to eventual realisation. The spoiled optimist, on the other hand, doesn't actually negate anything. They simply just don't know reality very well, because they have existed in a paradigm which has only existed as a one-sided expectation. The spoiled optimist will eventually fall out of this mode of thought, but only when reality does come along and smack them around the face a few times. But by that point, they might be too far gone unless they can successfully somehow climb out of the lie in which they have lived so far. In most cases of the 21st century, it is the pessimist who naturally views positivity as something that is rare, because it can be easily capitalised in a normative dullness. Companies, social media, advertisements, clothing brands, all of these who try to sell us things that we can somehow purchase happiness. And this is something the optimist, many a time, falls for. Either way, the pessimist will always be happier because when something good does happen, it will come to them as a surprise. And because it is a surprise, it will be more valuable, unlike the optimist who expects goodness all the time for them. The noticeable differences between the optimist and the pessimist is that after many tiring attempts of bad luck, the optimistic pessimist will accept good fortune willingly with gratitude. The optimist, on the other hand, will accept good fortune with arrogance and acclaimed injustice. Schopenhauer once said, I quote, Optimism is not only a false but also a pernicious doctrine, for it presents life as a desirable state and man's happiness as its aim and object. Starting from this, everyone then believes he has the most legitimate claim to happiness and enjoyment. If, as usually happens, these do not fall to his lot, he believes that he suffers an injustice. In fact, that he misses the whole point of his existence.